And so it's my extreme pleasure to welcome to the stage, Tim Kring. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome on this uh, bright and early morning. Um, so I'm going to try and talk fast, because I've got a bunch of stuff to, to show here. Um, as Gabe was saying, I, uh, I've been thinking a lot of, for many years about the idea of using story to create and promote positive change in the world. And um, I want to talk today about uh, a project that I did a few years ago called Conspiracy for Good. And what made this project really unique was this combination of um, kind of a multi-platform approach to, to storytelling combined with the idea of people's participation inside of that story. Uh, and then the idea that, that as a result of, of people's participation, we actually did real good in the real world. And in this case, we built, um, built and stocked five libraries in eastern Zambia. We donated 10,000 books through the participants uh, and gave away 50 scholarships uh, to schoolgirls. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm going to walk through the, that, that project a little bit. Um, first, I want to uh, just this, this slide here. Just I, I put it up there to basically uh, show kind of a simpler time when storytelling was really a very uh, simple idea of a one-way street. We pushed content out into the world. People watched it at the appointed time. And um, this is certainly, uh, Gabe stole my thunder a little bit. about th This is certainly my very first job was, uh, was writing uh, for a talking car uh, on uh, Knight Rider. And that was really the only way that people really approached the idea of, of, uh, of getting story was at an appointed time on a network. And um, the relationship that you had with, a, with your audience was, uh, was kind of non-existent. They watched the content. And if they liked it, anecdotally, you may hear about it on the Nielsen ratings. Um, jump 20 years ahead of that uh, to Heroes, which is a show that I did uh, where we took a very different approach to storytelling. Now, if you remember, Heroes was a, a, a show about a disparate group of people who come together to save the world. And it was an important message that I tried to hide inside of a genre kind of show. But for me, the show was always about uh, interconnectivity and about global consciousness and about the idea of people coming together to, to do great things. And in order to reach an audience that had started to migrate in all these different areas, we, um, we approached it with um, with a kind of a, uh, the idea of multi-platform storytelling, which is a very simple uh, concept when you really think about it. It's really just fishing where the fish are and using the, uh, the various platforms where people are already, you know, natural behaviors are already there. So let's cast a line and send some story that way, and we'll send story that way, and we'll send story that way. The, the, um, you know, the old model was that you'd create a, a, a story, you'd write a script, the script would go to a television show, and then these ideas of, of ancillary content would just may or may not exist, depending on the marketing budget, the promo budgets. With Heroes, we took a very different approach. We, we, we decided to, to take a story world and put the story world in the center, and then some of it would live on a television show, which was a, uh, a huge part of it lived on the television show, but some of it lived in all of these various different uh, parts. And the idea was to sort of use every part of the buffalo and create story that could live all around you. Here's a little video that, that, um, that talks ab about this. Heroes was designed to be a multi-platform universe that could actually connect to the audience where they live. I started to think about the kind of show that would capture a zeitgeist. How do these characters from different parts of the world come together to do something great? It was not just the size and scale of the show and the big, broad canvas that we had. The part that really connected the audience was this underlying message of hope and interconnectivity and this wish fulfillment that even the most ordinary among us could be destined for something great. In order to reach this audience, we had to tell story where they lived on multiple platforms. We started allowing that fan base to create content, to push content to us. And it was really at that time that the light bulb went off for me. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could take that idea and actually roll it out into the real world? You actually became a part of the narrative. Conspiracy for Good really came from the genesis of having created a mass culture phenomenon. 
idea, this idea of creating a, a dynamic relationship with the audience and, and having content that lived all around, this is sort of the universe of, of heroes and we, we had content that lived online and, and in ex, you know, web extras, we had video games and fan generated fiction. Um, we had, uh, you know, magazines and comic books and uh, we'd, we'd created alternate re reality gaming. Um, we had mobile content and all of this content really pushed a, a very different relationship, a very dynamic relationship that, with the audience. It became kind of a two-way street. You could really see it when you went to like Comic-Con and you saw the thousands of people who come out and dress in character to see the, the fans. And so I, I really started to think at, at the time, while I, we had, had created this, this idea of saving the world on, on fiction, what would happen if we rolled that out into the real world and, and, um, and tried to create something that my friend Brian Seth Hurst coined as social benefit storytelling, where people's participation inside a story could actually have real results in the, in the real world. And this is where the idea for uh, conspiracy for good came from. Um, creating a narrative that allowed people to live inside of an idea of a conspiracy, a, a, a secret society. Um, the the uh, se secret society of, of Spira, which is the, behind the conspiracy for good, has existed for 2,000 years. You just didn't realize that it had actually been there all along. Hidden in the shadows, it has quietly been responsible for all of the major political, philosophical, artistic, technological advancements of the, of the last 2,000 years. And again, these clues to this secret organization have been hidden there. Um, just, we didn't know where to find them. And this modern idea of the conspiracy for good is, is still with us. Uh, and we have created the idea that it is an immersive social movement that inspires people through story, gaming, and human connection to generate positive change in the world. So the idea was to create a pilot project, which we did with, uh, with the help of Nokia. And, and the goal was to connect a, two seemingly unconnectable ideas, uh, a fan base around a show, uh, around a narrative, like you would with a, a big narrative like Heroes, and connect it to a worthy cause. In this case, the cause was Room to Read, which is a uh, San Francisco-based uh, organization that builds libraries in underdeveloped parts of the world. And we did this by creating this, this big uh, narrative uh, that, that rolled out over multiple months. Uh, it started with an alternate reality game that lasted for a few months online with content that slowly leaked out, then in, eventually into mobile, and finally onto the streets of London where that acted as our sort of uh, game board for a very big um, immersive narrative that you could become a part of. Um, and the idea was to create this, um, uh, this narrative that you li would live inside of and that, that the clues to the, to the narrative would be all around you, that would live on, online, on, on social, on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, it would be uh, in the music that you downloaded, in the sidewalks that you walked down. Um, and we had up to 130 people working on this project in five countries. It was a big, a very massive uh, project. We started it by leaking out uh, the identity of, a, uh, of our bad guy, which was um, a multinational corporation called Blackwell Briggs, uh, that sort of, if you think about a Halliburton kind of, uh, you know, bl uh, BP kind of idea. And we've created a social presence for them with a, complete with a websites and commercials and Twitter account. One of our first followers on Twitter was um, Carl Rove, of all people, <laughs> who said, you know, I'm really eager to hear how you guys are proving that all bad guys all somehow find one another, I guess. Um, and uh, we had to have a face to this villain. Uh, and so Sir Ian Briggs became the face of, of uh, of our, uh, of our bad guy. And, and I'm gonna show you just a tiny little clip. It's a piece of an eight minute video. I wanna show it to you just to show the, the production value that, that, that we kind of created with this thing. This was a piece of a video that was never meant to be found by the public. Of course, we leaked it out onto Pirate Bay so that our, our, our fans would find it. And um, it was um, part of a, a, a video that was meant to, for, the, for the parliament uh, in the UK to, to convince them to vote for something called the Public Surveillance Private Security Act. 
Uh, so this is, a, this is a, little, a little clip from it. You have the power, the right, the obligation to make a difference. And we ask that you give our one world a chance. Our world. Your choice. video we started it, it started a, a kind of um, a David and Goliath story that, that uh, you'll pl you'll see play out in the sizzle reel that I'm going to show you in a minute um, but we started to leak content out onto the onto the web in a very uh, in a very slow way so um, for instance you would find a, a, a clue um, you'd notice that there was a Morse code clue somewhere go to a translator you translate that that message and you discover that there was a hidden message uh, there for you. The badge is the key. So you click on the badge and sure enough a, a, um, a hidden message would show up. This was then crowdsourced and things were crowdsourced very quickly and you discovered that there were coordinates that led you someplace. And going through a map, mapping system, Google Maps, you would discover that these are coordinates to a certain spot on the planet. In this case it was the city of Stockholm where we actually left some hidden clues for our participants to find. And, um, and sure enough, they went out into the streets and they found this stuff. Um, and this is, a, this is an okay. actual Sorry. video of somebody that somebody uploaded, um, finding oh. these hidden documents that we placed somewhere in Stockholm that would three months later be used to help bring down Blackwell Bridge once the, uh, once the narrative rolled out into the streets of London. So um, I have uh, talked kind of theoretically about this, and I have a, a sizzle reel here um, that kind of, it's, I'm, I decided to sort of show the whole sizzle reel because uh, it, it explains the whole thing. So why don't we take a look at it? Be on your guard. Stand firm in faith. Men of courage. In the spring of 2010, London witnessed the global launch of the Conspiracy for Good a radical new form of entertainment called social benefit storytelling, which allowed people's participation inside a story to do real good in the real world. Powered by Nokia, the producers designed the most ambitious multi-platform narrative ever seen, engaging a crew of over 130 people in five countries to create a story that lived all around the participants all the time. It all started with a three-month-long alternate reality game that included website discoveries, puzzles, tweets, and text messages, all enhanced by three mobile games created specifically to advance the story. And on July the 17th, the story burst from the web and onto the streets of London, culminating in four weeks of real-world gameplay and live theatre that would forever change the definition of audience participation. Get out of my face, move. And this is the story they told. Why are you running? Are you a member? Rows and rows of silent stones in the cemetery. They don't need your time. Just your testimony. In 2010, Recording artist Nadira X puts her career on hold to teach school in Zambia, where she plans to build a new library for her students. I always spoke from the heart, said hypocrisy apart. However, the library is never built. The books, shipped from London, mysteriously go missing. We have very firm ideas who's behind us. The main suspect is multinational corporation Blackwell Briggs, who plans to build an oil pipeline directly through the village. Can I get five minutes of his time? Nadira turns to her friend, David Nasofu, a local employee of the British company. He promises her and the school kids that he'll go to headquarters to save the library. 
But all that remains of his ill-fated London visit is a series of videos of him running for his life through the streets. And then, he disappeared. Where did he go? And what did he know? To search for David and help Nadira build her library, an ancient secret society called the Conspiracy for Good came to the rescue. People from around the world joined the cause. But in keeping with the society's secret tradition, always stated that they were not a member. I'm 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 not a member. I am not a member. I am not a member. Conspiracyforgood.com was launched. Thousands came to the site to conspire to do good and help build the library. Participants worked together to chat and share clues, decode documents, and decipher music. Critical pieces of the mission were solved. Map coordinates led to Nadira's school, which was in Chaitaika village, eastern Zambia. Deciphered songs led to Room to Read, which agreed to build a library in Chaitaika. People even adopted the conspiracy's logo, selling merchandise to benefit the cause. Three cell phone games released important hacking tools to play the game and were downloaded over 900,000 times around the world. With them, participants hacked the servers at blackwellbricks.com and quickly learned of the company's illegal activities. But only one person held the final silver bullet that could bring down the company, Nadira. Across 20 webisodes, participants located Nadira in Zambia and convinced her to travel to London to complete David's mission. The conspiracy used OV maps to guide her the entire distance to Tower Bridge, where she was greeted by fans, but also Blackwell Briggs agents, eager to stop anyone helping her. In London, the action had arrived. Whatever happens today will be the end of this chapter of our fight. We're far beyond enemy lines. Over four consecutive Saturdays, participants helped Nadira follow David's trail through the city using Nokia's revolutionary mobile technology called Point and Find, which picked up digital tags hidden in art and graffiti. These tags opened an image or a video in their phone, which led to the next spot in the city. Suddenly, the streets of London were a treasure trove of hidden clues and messages. You must be right. The Ying Yang? Even me and Spirit go straight for the Ying Yang. Participants also found secret underground concerts where they celebrated the conspiracy's actions that day. But Blackwell Briggs security was always close behind. Because agents surveyed the participants every day, Twitter was the communication form of choice. And to complete important actions, flash mobs were created to divert the agents. A hostage handover was negotiated, a headquarters established, and caches of supplies discovered. On August the 7th, Ian Briggs was toppled at his very own press conference, infiltrated by Nadira herself and the conspiracy for good. I want to say thank you to everyone. Let me test, let me test, let me test.
So I, um, I've run over my time here. I just wanted to just close by saying um, that the, the importance of this project was really in the kind of groundbreaking nature of it, the idea that uh, using narrative to um, allow people's participation inside of a story proved to be this really effective way of getting people um, out of their homes and onto the streets and uh, enjoying uh, uh, the process and, and by, by doing so and doing real good in the real, real world. So thank you very much for, for listening.